Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrook Workshop. I've been asked a number of times to explain some of the differences between the saw blades that you can get for your uh, plunge saw, track saw. And I've got the Festool TS55, which you can see at the back there. And I've also got uh, the Festool CMS unit with the TS55R in it, uh, which is my table saw. And of course, the brilliant uh, Capex, or Capex as it's sometimes called, uh, which is my uh, mitre saw. Now, before I get into the specifics of the saw blades that I've got on the bench behind me, uh, let me just talk in general terms about the design of saw blades. Now, all of these saw blades have got different characteristics, and I'll explain how they are suited for different types of uh, activity shortly. Um, now, you do need to take care of your saw blades. This one, uh, I've written the word nail on there. I'm afraid I destroyed it a long time ago when I accidentally hit a nail. Uh, it's something you don't want to do uh, very often. Now, the principal difference between saw blades for us mere mortals is the number of teeth per inch. There are other very clever things which are done to saw blades uh, to make them cut even better uh, and to make them run more smoothly, but I'm going to concentrate on teeth per inch. And the reason teeth per inch is important is because of the different ways that you might cut a piece of wood. Now, you might be cutting a piece of wood across the grain, in which case you're going to be uh, developing a number of fairly short uh, fibres uh, as the saw blade goes through the material. And those short fibres uh, are not going to block the saw as much as long fibres would do. So if you then compare a cross-cutting action to cutting along the grain, well there you're generating potentially very long fibres indeed, and those need to be cleared away. If you don't clear the fibres away as you're cutting, so the saw blade gets hot, it starts to run inefficiently and may distort, and that's when you start to get trouble burning and so on. So if you're cutting along the grain, you want less teeth per inch. And if we look at these two saw blades, uh, this one is designed for cutting along the grain where you're going to have those long uh, fibres to contend with and this one is designed for cutting across the grain where those, those fibres are going to be much shorter. And there are two uh, other clever features uh, and uh, one is common to most uh, circular saw blades and that is uh, that alternate teeth have the cutting tip uh, on the opposite edge of the saw blade. And that means that you're getting a scribe on each side of the saw cut, which leads to much finer, much nicer finish on your material. Now to illustrate uh, those alternate teeth, uh, this is a piece of MDF and it came from at the bottom of a piece of MDF that I was cutting. And the reason it's uh, a nice thin string like this is that uh, one side of the tooth was cutting on this side, uh, the next tooth was cutting on that side and so on alternately. And so you end up with this little strip like so. Now, I don't know if this is unique uh, to Festool, but one of the things that I've noticed on their blades is that the, the shoulder behind each of the cutting tips uh, varies as you go around uh, the saw blade. So if you look at this one, it's a fairly narrow shoulder, slightly thicker shoulder here, and then uh, thicker again there. Uh, and that, that varies as you go around uh, the saw blade and uh, apparently that makes it uh, uh, run better uh, and also uh, reduces vibration. Now there are three saw blades I'm going to demonstrate and uh, when you buy your TS55 it will come uh, with a fine tooth blade and this uh, has 48 teeth. Uh, the next one is the universal blade which has 28 teeth and finally there's the panther blade which has 12 teeth and I'll be using my uh, TS55 here uh, and I'll be changing the blade, very simple to do. And I'm going to start with the uh, fine tooth blade which is the one that comes with the saw when you buy it new. And once that's tightened up then I can release uh, the locking mechanism and then the saw is ready for action. Now my test setup is as follows. I've got here a piece of ash, it's 44 millimetres thick and it's uh, quite a large and generous offcut supplied by timber source and I'm very grateful to them. Now my guide rail, I've got that actually uh, 
anchored down uh, with clamps from underneath, so that's held firmly on the uh, surface of the wood. And the reason for that is when you're uh, cutting, particularly along the grain, with thick pieces of wood, you can get kickback. And kickback is when the saw wants to go backwards as it's starting its cut. And also to help stop that being a, a nuisance, I've got this uh, stop here on the guide rail, which will help stop the saw coming back off the end of the track. Uh, the saw is my TS55, and it's connected uh, to my CT26 extractor. The first cut uh, is going to be done with the fine tooth blade, the one that comes with the saw. I'll just fix the clamps. So that's in, position my saw, and away I go. Now, two hands on the saw because this is a fairly thick lump of wood. That was a fine tooth blade, and you could hear it struggling just very slightly towards the end of the cut. I didn't quite start that at the very beginning there. That doesn't matter. Uh, but the finish there is, is very smooth indeed. Uh, there's a very tiny burn bit mark there, but uh, nothing of any significance. And now we'll try the cross cut. Uh, that is absolutely super duper. Very, very smooth indeed. I'm going to keep these two side by side. I'm writing 48 on there, 48 on there. Those are the actual cut surfaces done with this blade. Now do take care if you're changing a blade uh, shortly after having done uh, a cut, it might be hot. This one's absolutely perfectly okay, uh, with no problem whatsoever. New blade goes in. That's good. And now I can release. And that's done. Let's clamp this piece of wood in properly. That's held there. That's good. The power is reconnected to the saw. And I'm going to start with both hands. That's pretty good. Uh, there's Maybe I was wobbling slightly, you can just see a little bit of pattern where the uh, saw blade is passing, slightly curved pattern there. The same on that side, but I'll put 28 on there. Now to do the cross cut. That's really good. I'll put 28 on there. And the, the universal blade is actually designed for both uh, cross-cutting and ripping as well. And so that's, that's pretty good. And it's this blade which I have in my CMS TS all the time. And finally, I've got the panther blade in here. That's 12 uh, teeth. And uh, this one is primarily designed for ripping. It's not as smooth as the other two, and I can see some uh, little scoring marks here. But then, you know, 12 teeth, uh, you should expect this. So I'll just write on there 12, and we'll now do the rip cut. Certainly the easiest as far as pushing goes. And again, you've got some score marks here, which you would expect. This is a ripping blade, it's not a finished blade, uh, but that is very easy. And it went through there with no problems at all. Now, this is 12, 28, and 48. And I don't know whether it's possible to show up any of the differences by using this light. So that's the 48. It's left a very nice uh, ripping uh, surface, uh, but it was very slow to do that. Uh, the universal blade, uh, pretty good for both cross-cut and uh, ripping, as you'd expect. And the panther blade, well, uh, you are getting some uh, teeth marks here, 
uh, in a circular pattern and also on the cross cut. Uh, but it was very quick to do that uh, ripping and that's the key thing about the Panther blade. It's a ripping blade. Just one quick word about maintenance. Uh, you will get uh, deposits building up. It's a sort of uh, like a, a tarry resin that builds up, particularly if you're cutting a lot of soft wood. Um, don't let that get too bad, otherwise that can uh, make the wood start to burn and the, the blade is then cutting very inefficiently. Uh, you can use mineral spirits uh, and if uh, in extremis you can use something sharp just to pick the little bits off. Uh, but the very best thing is to keep your saw blades sharp, have them sharpened regularly. They'll perform then as the manufacturer intends. And whatever you do, don't hit a nail. It's very disappointing. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.